Well, good morning. Wayne here, and it's Thursday again. Today I'm going to show you how I constructed the round top lid for the toy box that you're looking at right now. So stay with me and learn how it's done. Today I'm going to give you some information on a, how to calculate a round top trunk, the lid especially. Uh, it seems that uh, that's always been a, a problem in my mind and I did a bunch of research on it. Since I'm not a mathematician, I didn't want to go into all the details on how to calculate it. And so my son Jerry, he has, a, he and his wife have a little on the side company that they call Redneck Table Company and he says, hey, would you show me how to uh, calculate a round top lid for a toy box and I thought okay let's give it a try. Got a little chart here drawn out on a chalkboard and let's see if I can make heads and tails of it for you and uh, we'll continue on. First of all uh, what we need to do is uh, get a rectangular box drawn on on the chalkboard and a center line, a vertical center line. I'm going to try not to get in the way here. We we'll use a ruler for a pointer. Okay, here's the box. It's going to be 12 inches wide from from here to here, and 12 inches from the top of the where the dome connects to the side of the box, and then 12 inches down here. So what we've done here is to find an exact center line of, of the, the dome. So 12, uh, 12 inches divided by 6, or by 2 <laughs> equals 6. So 6 inches on each side of this line gives us uh, an actual halfway mark down the center. This is an important piece of the puzzle. Okay, the next thing is to determine how tall we want the dome of the box to be. Well, I kind of arbitrarily chose two inches uh, for the, the top. So I put a mark here two inches above uh, the top of the, of the box. And then I had to, of course, find where uh, the center of the the circle, the, the circumference of the circle, uh, and then I was able to locate my radius. First of all, I'm going to put this um, this yardstick right on the top of it here. If I can make it stick, I put some double stick tape on there. Okay, if it'll stay, we'll be okay. Now, what we need to do is measure from here down and from this point down. And that will give us the center of our circle. So here I've got tape, 12 inch uh, tape, a 12 inch ruler. So I'll put one inch point or zero point right there. And then we'll go over here until we come into a, an alignment with a number uh, on the vertical measuring tape. You could use another another uh, steel tape, uh, steel ruler if you wanted to. Well, it turns out this is 10 inches where, where the numbers match. So we have 10 on here, 10 on here. If your circle is larger or smaller, it's going to change that amount to, to tell you what your circle is. Okay, now we know that it's 10 inches to in, in the radius of our, of our circle. Okay, we know that it's 10 inches uh, on the radius using these two points. And there's a mathematical equation that figures that out for you. If you want to go to the trouble of looking it up on the internet, maybe you're already a mathematician. Okay, so I've set my 
my circle uh, beam to 10 inches from the pencil to the center. What I'll do is set the center right on here on the 10 inch mark and then I can draw my circle which you probably see that I've already drawn the circle but the semi or part circle uh, whatever you want to call it here I drew it ahead of time so you could, but I'll give you a little demonstration okay we've got the arc of our circle now the next thing we need to do is to determine how wide we think we want our pieces on top of the of the the radius of the the dome top. So what I've figured, just as an arbitrary figure, is an inch and a half for each piece, and that will tell me how many pieces it takes to go around this radius. On this piece of plywood, I've laid out. 12 inches wide from this screw to this screw. I'll try to stay out of your way here. And then I've gone from my straight line up 2 inches to this screw. So what I want to do is put a flexible piece of plastic under that screw, over top of this one and under this one. And I've taken my piece of plastic and I've already marked on here where I want to line up with my first screw and then I will then mark where the plastic then goes under this screw and that will give me an approximation of how many inches wide uh, of uh, material I need to have to make the round top of the trunk. So here goes. First I'll line up that mark with the first screw Put this one over top of the middle screw and then underneath like that. Then I'll take my magic marker and I will pick, put a mark at the point where um, the uh, second side of the arc is located. Then I can take this off, lay it down, I've got my two marks here, and then I will measure that distance. Now I don't know if you can see this, I, hopefully it's in focus, but it's just a little over 13 inches right here, about 13 and eighth inch for the total length for the, to, from the point, I guess you could call it point A to point B, but uh, anyway I'd like to think about the idea that I need a few more inches, two, two or so more inches because of the kerf cutting and the the kerf of the of the blade and the angle of each piece is going we're going to lose a little bit so uh, bear in mind that you probably use more than what you actually measure we've uh, covered a quite a bit of territory today uh, next week we're going to get into calculating the angles that we need for each one of the staves on the top of the trunk. So this is Wayne signing off and uh, we'll see you next week.